And it's time for the weekly Raw Report. And actually, the show, this was not the worst show. In fact, the first hour of the show, I would go as far as to say, was pretty great. I can't say it was totally great, because uh, there was so much. Like, the opening match was a triple threat tag team match. Randy Orton and Riddle versus Alpha Academy, Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins, three-way match. And uh, the match, the good news is the match got 27 minutes, and it was a great match. And we got a title change. Uh, the bad news, if you want to call it that, is uh, somehow this took up the entire, entire hour of the show was uh, built around this match. So they opened up with clips of Roman Reigns attacking Brock Lesnar at uh, Madison Square Garden, which they showed multiple times here on the show, which uh, I guess was like a big angle. You know, he beat the guy up. I feel like we've seen that a million times. But they showed that. And then Owens and Rollins made their entrance. Owens and Rollins did a promo. Alpha Academy came out. Alpha Academy did a promo. Riddle and Randy Orton did a promo. Riddle and Randy Orton made an entrance. Then we got a 27-minute match. And then after that, we had an interview with Orton and Riddle. And uh, that was it. The, the entire first hour was built around this segment. So did I like it? Yes. Was it a really good first hour? Yes. Was it, like, a whole bunch of useless stuff as well? Yes. You gotta take the good with the bad when you watch Raw. The match itself, great match. Chad, uh, Chad Gable was uh, was everyone in this match, I should say, was was fantastic. And probably the highlight was Chad Gable goes up to do the big Kurt Angle-style moonsault, and Randy Orton hits him with the RKO out of midair. It was perfectly timed. It was so awesome. And Randy Orton, by the way, Randy Orton was hurt last week when he got squished with that frog splash. Not a serious injury, but, bro, that guy got smashed. And uh, that was that was a legitimate injury, but he was back here for this match. And they ended up uh, winning the tag team titles. Uh, Owens and Rollins did the big super kick party. Rollins gave uh, Chad Gable a buckle bomb. Owens hit the stunner, Rollins hit the curb stomp, and then Riddle tossed Rollins out of the ring, stole the pin. They won the tag team titles. This place went absolutely crazy for these guys. And for those of you that don't know the story, if you listen to Observer Radio last night, when they first got together, there was like a charisma to these two guys. It was, they, they clearly were great together. But I watched it, and I predicted, and I think most people predicted, you know, Randy Orton's going to turn on this guy in like a week. And I argued strongly against that because we had it was so clear we had something here. And uh, as as Randy Orton noted in an interview, that was the plan. The plan was that we're going to get together and break up like a week later. Well, turns out somebody with a brain decided, my God, this actually is it's new, it's good, it's fun, the fans like it, and so they went with it. And I think I don't know this one for sure, but I would bet you anything that when they went with it. The idea was, we're going to break them up and they're going to do a match at WrestleMania. And I suppose that could still happen, but, I mean, when this match was over, Randy Orton did this promo and he said, I've been here 20 years and I have never had as much fun as I'm having right now. And I'm going to say the F word here on television. I don't think I've ever said it before, ever in WWE, but this guy, this Matt Riddle, he's my friend. And Matt Riddle's almost in tears in the background. And the place just goes crazy because, by God, we have baby faces who are friends. And they went crazy. And I thought, dude, you got a lot of life left in this thing. Like, don't end it now. But as soon as Randy Orton called the guy his friend, I was like, I don't know if they're breaking up before Mania. But one of these days, one of these days. But this match was great. Randy was great. I loved this entire first segment. And we had uh, Reggie and Dana backstage, and uh, Reggie wanted a, a good luck kiss, or Dana wanted a good luck kiss, so he gave it to her. And then Tozawa wants a good luck kiss from Tamina, and she violently kissed him. This coming off when she kissed him last week. So then we had Dana against Tamina after like six months of build. And uh, remember they built up the breakup of Wardlow and MJF for two years and it happened in like people around the country and theaters and bars and pay-per-view. They all went crazy. Well, we've been building this one up for months and no one cared 
literally one bit about it. I don't think I don't even think probably like Dana's parents were watching. So they do this match. They get a whopping one minute for the twenty four seven title. Uh, Dana pins her, and then uh, she bails. And then Tozawa wants a kiss. He says, "Tamina, you're the love of my life. I want a kiss." And she won't kiss him, and he has to look sad. And the announcers have to talk about how poor Tozawa, he just can't get a kiss. And I'm like, he just got one! Two weeks in a row he got a kiss! They paid off the kiss, and now they're going backwards to build up to a kiss that he already got! It's like Einstein's book in this. You know, time moves in two directions. Theory of relativity. Yeah, that's the way they book. The Miz and Logan Paul came out. They're both from uh, Cleveland. And uh, and Miz cuts a babyface promo. And I'm here from Cleveland. We're Cleveland guys. They still hated Logan Paul, but they, they cheered Miz initially. And then and then Jerry Lawler comes out because they announced Jerry Lawler was going to be on the show. What's Jerry Lawler going to do, we asked. And uh, turns out he came out to say, you know, one day I used to live here. I used to live here back in the day. I grew up in, uh, you know, I, uh, Lorraine. Everyone goes, hey, Lorraine. And Amherst. Oh, man, he's repping Amherst. And then he says, you know, it would be great. It would be great if Cleveland, Ohio hosted WrestleMania. God bless him, Miz, but he's a man of facts. He's like, brother, it ain't going to be a WrestleMania in Cleveland. And so they start booing him and, you know, Logan Paul's kind of like, what's this guy being so mean to Cleveland for? And so Miz walks out on Cleveland, and Logan Paul kind of follows behind him, but he's all confused. So, yes, I do think in the end the idea here is, uh, you know, Logan Paul's going to ultimately beat up Miz. I'm going to try and turn the guy babyface, try and rehab the guy. So good luck with that one. We had Tommaso Ciampa and Braun Breaker do an interview. They're facing uh, Ziggler and Rude again. And that was, in fact, the next match. It's Braun Breaker and Ciampa versus Ziggler and Rude. This was a match on NXT last week that I was so excited for. And the finish last week was Tommaso Ciampa pinned Dolph Ziggler. I was like, what in God's name? So then they added Ciampa to the three-way. So I didn't like it, but I could at least say, all right, whatever. You add you you beat the guy, so now you're also going to get a, a chance. Even though you didn't beat the champion, you pinned the challenger, which now makes you whatever. So then they have the rematch again here, and I was like, I would have been mad if it wasn't so preposterous. Dolph Ziggler gets pinned again. He got pinned by Braun Breaker, rolled up and pinned him. Actually, no, it was his finish. He pressed him and he power slammed him and he pinned him in the middle of the ring. And at that point, I was like, bro, whatever. Like, I, I can't possibly care. And then, you know, Ziggler then has to cut the tough guy promo. Oh, I'll get you tomorrow. I'm like, has, this business is so past me by sometimes. Like, I could not possibly care less about this. They have done everything. When they... When they... Put up when they put together that tag match for NXT two weeks ago. I couldn't wait for this tag match. I couldn't wait. And they were building to Braun Breaker versus Ziggler. I was like, oh man, here we go. They have done everything wrong to make me not care at all about this match. And my God. Yeah, Dave's like, well, you know, Ziggler's probably going to win the title. Oh, wow. So the guy who never, ever could win on the main roster goes to NXT and does a promo about how he can never win. He then proceeds to do jobs two shows in a row leading to the... And now he's going to be the champion? Wow. Well, man, you know what's going to turn around NXT ratings is having a total dork as the NXT champion. Because, boy, they've made this guy an uber dork with their horrible booking. So I, I guess I did get mad after all. Omos squashed Apollo Crews, and they set up at Stare Down with Omos and Aziz. Because you know they're probably going to have an Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So you're telling me that people are actually going to get on the WrestleMania card? Wow. Because this whole show was about Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins not having a path to WrestleMania. They're not, you know, they're not going to be on WrestleMania. That's what they told me, of a, a viewer. 
you know, these guys ain't going to be able to get on this WrestleMania show. There's no clear path. There's no slot for Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens on a two-night WrestleMania. Did you know that? And that's what they told me. Then we had an Edge segment, which was just like, whatever. This guy's a great promo. He sure wasn't tonight. I don't even know what he was rambling on about. He's, he's at the top of the mountain of omnipotence, and it's a phenomenal view. And then he just disappeared. All right. Well, if I'm supposed to, be, if I'm supposed to boo the guy, I, I was booing this promo. Kevin Owens has no path to WrestleMania. Seth Rollins has an interview. He has no path to WrestleMania. Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan beat Zelina and Carmella. These women's tag titles are so... Pre- I guess I hated the end of the show now that I think about it. These, these belts are so prestigious that in the middle of this match, Carmella leaves the ring to go flirt with her boyfriend. Zelina is left alone. Rhea kills her with a riptide, pins her, and so now it's a three-way for the women's titles at WrestleMania. Hmm. We had uh, Finn Balor beating Austin Theory. <laughs> They're just doing this match, and then Damian Priest just ran in for the DQ. Because that's what they do. And then the main event was the segment with Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens comes out, talks about how this show is stupendous. And he says, you know, I've been, uh, been running down Texas... I could choose a blowhard like JBL, but eh, nobody would care. And Booker T, that guy's a hypocrite. He was he claims he's from Texas, but he worked most of his career as Harlem Heat. He ain't going to be on my show. And as far as Shawn Michaels goes, as a proud Canadian, and out of great respect for Brett the Hitman Hart, that guy ain't going to be on my show. But there's a guy, he says, who's probably let himself go, drinking too much beer, can't even walk to the ring, much less have a match. I want this man to be on the KO show. I'm going to beat him down. Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then just, just to screw with the live audience, they hit Stone Cold's music and this place goes crazy. But there's no Stone Cold. There's just a graphic on the screen. And that's how the show went off the air. That's how they're showing off the air. But you know them fans are just going to take it because that's what they do. So anyway, that was Raw. Great first hour. And then, uh, hey, if I'm giving the, the recommendation, watch hour one, turn program off. That's the best way to go about doing this. So there you go. Google Tiger Jackson Wrestler. And then go into images. And then go into GIFs. <laughs> he does all these spots where he spins on his head. I'm crying. And I'm supposed to be watching this stupid show, but I just keep watching Tiger Jackson spots on Google. I hereby induct him into the Matt Cleary Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Thank you, Craig. That's two to that's two to zero or whatever. Aye. Okay. If you enjoy these videos for just seven dollars and ninety-nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.